True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Here is end time newsman, Rick Wiles. This is True News, uncensored news, views, and commentary. Welcome to the program. I'm Rick Wiles. Doc Burkhardt and Edward Zoll are here with me. Guys, glad to have you here. Good Great to be here. here. All right, this is going to be a really interesting program. Several weeks ago, I was with my wife, Susan. You guys already know this story. I was uh, with Susan while she was visiting her physician, who is uh, Dr. Don Colbert. Right. And I had a conversation with Mrs. Colbert while Susan was with the doctor. And Mrs. Colbert mentioned to me that one of her husband's patients gave him a copy of a prophetic message he said the Lord gave him. And Mary Colbert went to her office and retrieved the document for me to read. It was dated April 28, 2011. The moment I read the first line of the prophecy, I immediately glanced back at the date to make sure I had read it correctly. I did read it correctly. The date was April 28, 2011. I read the entire prophecy and then sat silent for a moment as I tried to comprehend the message. I looked over at Mrs. Colbert and I asked, Are you telling me this is for real? Are you telling me a patient of Dr. Colbert gave him this prophecy in 2011? And she nodded her head and said, yes, it's true. And then she picked up her phone and she called the gentleman and introduced me to him. And then he told me the story about the day the Lord gave him the prophecy. So I asked him if he would come on True News and share it with the entire True News audience. Fascinating story here. This is so. this is definitely fascinating. And the gentleman is on the telephone right now. Mr. Mark Taylor is a retired lieutenant in the fire department. And he is uh, on the phone right now from his home. Mark, welcome to True News. Thank you, Rick. It's glad to be here. Yeah. Let's just, I want to start... <laughs> Right at the beginning of this prophecy, because uh, I looked at the date, I began reading the prophecy, and then I, I didn't even get past the first sentence, and I looked back at the date, and I'm thinking, is this a typo? This must have been April 28, 2016, but wait a minute. It's not, we haven't even reached April 28, 2016. <laughs> So then I'm thinking, well, maybe it was March 28, 2016, you know? So I went ahead and read the entire prophecy, and, and you know, I just, my first thing I said to, to Mary Colbert was, is this for real? Are you honestly telling me that this was given to you five years ago? And she said, oh, yeah, this man is a patient here. He, he gave this to Dr. Colbert. So, Mark, tell us about... Was there anything special that happened to you on on the day that you received this? Uh, were you in prayer? Uh, to just set the stage for us. Uh, and then I want you to read the prophecy uh, word for word. Okay. Uh, what happened was um, in 2006, um, right as I retired, I had a visitation from the Lord. And in that visitation, the Lord assigned an angel to me. And um, fast forward to about four years ago, I had Prophet Kemp Simpson gave me a prophetic word. We never met, never spoke. He told me that I had an angel assigned to me, that he was assigned to me for the gift of faith. He was to minister not only to me but for me, but he would also only hear the words that come from the throne of God. And when he heard those words that came from the throne of God, he would immediately go and do those words to come up to bring them to pass. So in 2011, I was sitting in front of the TV. And uh, I saw Donald Trump on TV, and all of a sudden I went, oh, my gosh, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm hearing the voice of a president. So I went into my office, and I sat down, and I started writing what God was saying, because in that visitation that I had, that was what uh, my strongest anointing would be, would be in the written prophetic word. Okay, I, want to st I just want to take this step by step here. So 2011, you're, you're in your living room, you're watching television— 
and Donald J. Trump is on television. Was it one of his uh, reality shows or an interview? It was in an interview, I think, on the news, because, you know, at the time he was thinking about running for president. And I want to make – I want the listeners to understand, because I am real here and I don't want to deceive anybody, I originally thought that this was going to be for 2012, because on three months later I wrote a prophecy called The Great Horse that there was another Triple Crown winner coming, and I said in 2012 there would be another Triple Crown winner. And it would be a sign to the church that it was their time to break out, because Secretariat was a sign of the end-time church. So I remember this prophecy. Yeah. I'm, well, I, I, I remember this Davis now. Talk we talked, about, we talked about this. Yes. Yeah, Paul Keith Davis talked about how Secretariat was a sign of the end-time church. They would come from behind and be the winner. Well, we don't know when that time was going to be, but this next Triple Crown winner was going to show that it was time for the church to break out. So anyhow, I thought all this was supposed to go down in 2012. But we had a Triple Crown winner, and it was Pharaoh. Well, in 2012. Mm -hmm. this, this was all supposed to happen in 2012. Okay. Donald Trump and the horse. And so I thought when that didn't come to pass, because Trump never announced he was going to run. So I thought I had truly missed these two words, so I set them aside. Now, there's a, I'm trying not to get off topic here, but God gave me General Eisenhower's speech. He says, I want you to go back and take that speech, and I want you to rewrite it and address it to my army. Which, which speech? The D-Day speech. So I went back, and I took the D-Day speech, and I rewrote it, addressing it to God's army. Well, I didn't know what to do with it at the time, so I pushed it aside with the rest of this stuff. Well, fast forward to 2015. I thought I had missed all this stuff. All of a sudden, the Triple Crown winner comes, American Pharaoh, in 2015, and I'm on the phone with my sister, and she says, oh, my gosh, what day is today? And I said, it's D-Day. And I heard the Lord say, release the speech. Ten days later, Donald Trump announces he's running for president. And I went, oh, my goodness. So I pulled all this stuff out, these three things that I had set aside for years, and all of a sudden, everything came together at one shot. Now, in the prophecy, and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, did I miss this? And he says, no. He says, all of this was supposed to happen in 2012, but he says, my people were not ready. He said, I held it off. He says, go back and look at the horse that ran in 2012, because the horse ran the first two races, but he lost the last one. And I always thought it had a kind of peculiar, peculiar name, and it was, I'll have another, which I thought meant I'll have another drink or something. And the Lord said, no, I'll have another one coming is what he meant, is because my people, the church, was not ready. They needed three or four more years of this garbage with Obama going on where they would get a righteous anger, rise up and say, enough's enough. So that's why all this stuff came together in a 10-day period. June 16th, Donald Trump announces he's running. Now, I'll read the prophecy first, and then I'll go back and give some, maybe some details, if that's okay. Is that be all sure, right? go ahead. All right. So I titled the... Uh, the prophecy, Commander-in-Chief, and it says, The Spirit of God says, I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, for such a time as this. For as Benjamin Netanyahu is to Israel, so shall this man be to the United States of America. For I will use this man to bring honor, respect, and restoration to America. America will be respected once again as the most powerful and prosperous nation on earth other than Israel. The dollar will be the strongest it has ever been in the history of the United States and will once again be the currency by which all others are judged. The Spirit of God says the enemy will quake and shake and fear this man I have anointed. They will even quake and shake when he announces he is running for president. It will be like the shot heard across the world. The enemy will say, what shall we do now? This man knows all our tricks and schemes. We have been robbing America for decades. What shall we do to stop this? The Spirit says, ha, no one shall stop this that I have started. For the enemy has stolen from America for decades, and it stops now. For I will use this man to reap the harvest that the United States has sown for and plunder from the enemy what, has, what he has stolen and return it sevenfold back to the United States. The enemy will say, Israel, Israel, what about Israel? For Israel will be protected by America once again. The Spirit says, yes, America will once again stand hand in hand with Israel, and the two shall be as one. For the ties between Israel and America will be stronger than ever, and Israel will flourish like never before. The Spirit of God says, I will protect America and Israel, for this next president will be a man of his word. When he speaks, the world will listen and know that there is something greater in him than all the others before him. This man's word is his bond, and the world and America will know this, and the enemy will fear this, for this man will be fearless. 
The Spirit says, when the financial harvest begins, so shall it parallel in the spiritual for America. The Spirit of God says, in this next election, they will spend billions to keep this president in. It will be like flushing their money down the toilet. Let them waste their money for it comes from and is being used by evil forces at work, but they will not succeed. For this next election will be a clean sweep for the man that I have chosen. They will say things about this man, the enemy, but it will not affect him. They shall say it rolls off of him like the duck. For as the feathers of a duck protect it, so shall my feathers protect this next president. Even mainstream news media will be captivated by this man and the abilities that I have gifted him with. And they will even begin to agree with him, says the Spirit of God. Amazing. This is truly amazing. Mark, it's, it it reads like you wrote it last week. Right. That's why it, I, it took me back so so strongly because I kept looking at the date. Right. And the one thing I wanted to point out is um, because there's, there's a whole World War II component to this thing, and there's a bigger picture that the church is not seeing right now, and that it's all about the end time harvest. Well, wait, wait, before we go there, let, let's 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 dissect this word, and then we'll move on and talk about uh, the prophetic meaning for for the body of Christ. Um, looking at, uh, at at this prophetic word. It says, the Spirit of God says, I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, for such a time as this. Correct. What does that mean to you? That means he's not been called, he's been chosen. Hmm. There's a difference. Just like Joseph was not called, he was chosen. So Donald Trump has been chosen. This whole life, building this empire, has been to prepare him for the season that's coming up right now, that we're in right now, in order to help turn America around. And the one thing I wanted to point out is that it, when he announces it'll be like the shot heard around the world that here in the second paragraph, the Lord told me, he says, I want you to go back and I want you to research uh, June 16th. So I went back and I couldn't find anything. And I said, Lord, I can't find anything. He says, no, go back to, to World War II. So I went back to World War II. And June 16th, 1945 was the day they made the decision to drop the, the atomic bomb. Now, if that's not the shot heard around the world, I don't know what is. So, I mean, do you think that's a coincidence that he announces on that same day? Because it's going to be like a nuclear bomb going off when he announces. Because this man is known worldwide. The prophecy says they will even quake and shake when he announces he is running. Yeah. The enemy will say, what shall we do now? He, this man knows our tricks and schemes. Absolutely. I mean, how many how many times have you heard him sit up there since then and say, hey, I, I know all this about uh, such and such a group. This is what China's trying to do. This is what Mexico's trying to do. Uh, you know, th these aren't friends of the United States. Y you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of times. So, I mean, um, he's, he's exposing everything right now. Wait, he knows how international business works. Exactly. And he knows the way the deals are made. And and that terrifies the people who are doing the deals. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I don't want to get off track, uh, but I mean, because there's more to, to, to say about that. But he is going to be used. It says right here, he will use this man to reap the harvest the United States has sown for and plunder from the enemy what he has stolen and return it back sevenfold to the United States. Now, everybody always says that America's under judgment, judgment, judgment. No, it's not. The systems are. But what God's going to do is he's going to go back and reap this harvest. Now, I didn't know much about Donald Trump when I wrote this. I, I knew he was, he was a very powerful, wealthy individual who created a huge business. That's about all I knew of him at the time. And so, I mean, he's going to literally use this man to plunder from the enemy what we have sown. Nobody talks about the good things that America has done. Look at all the seeds we have sown. I, I wrote that in my other prophecy, America, America. All the seeds that we have sown are coming back to, to America. Ninety percent of the gospel that's gone out has come from America. Where are all those seeds? Nobody talks about the seeds that are to come to harvest. God's going to bring those seeds back to harvest, and he's going to use Donald Trump as part of that because he knows all these things. He's been there. He's done that. He's experienced it. He knows how to go in and get it, like he talks about taking the oil on some of these places, getting the money back for protecting some of these countries. See, all that money is going to start coming back. Mark, when, when you say America is not under judgment, uh, you said, what is it, the system is under judgment? 
Well, I think the systems, like the financial systems, the political systems, the immigration system, Mm -hmm. all these systems of the worldly systems, because you're having this new world order starting to take effect. And that's what God's going to put a stop on in America, because America has been chosen as the launching platform for the harvest. Well, we have certainly been, many of us, crying out to the Lord for years. Yes. To free us of the tyranny of of this regime because it, it is a regime it's a wicked evil regime absolutely that has that has taken control of the United States of America and seeks to control the rest of the world yes and they're they're committing acts of evil and wickedness yes it, it, what you're seeing is the kingdom of darkness is in a political realm right now uh you're seeing it uh everything's being exposed right now um God is using, and I can give signs. I wrote down some signs because God's giving signs everywhere right now in this, in this electoral process. Um, he's giving signs for who he has anointed, who he has not anointed in this hour. And I wrote down some things uh, for the people, for the, for, for the listeners, to show that he is anointed by God for this. Now, the first one is that every time this man is attacked, Never in the history of politics have you ever seen someone get attacked the way this man has. But every time he's attacked, his numbers go up, the others go down, even to the point where they get kicked out of the race. Why do you think that is? That is because he is anointed. God is very serious right now when he says, do not touch my anointed. Whether you agree with him or you don't agree with him, he's still anointed by God. Don't touch him. And that's why you're seeing these people getting kicked out of the race, even news media outlets are taking a hit because the ones who are doing the attacking are the ones who are getting hit because God is not playing games anymore when it comes to this. Let me ask, I'm going to bring Doc Burkhardt in mm-hmm. this conversation, Doc. Uh, does the Bible give us examples of of um, the Lord choosing and anointing men to do an assignment in his name who those men would not necessarily qualify as choir boys? Certainly. I mean, you've got Cyrus, you've got Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, you've got numerous examples in the Old Testament of God using those that we would consider outside the fold or even ungodly in some aspects. And oftentimes God is saying, like with Nebuchadnezzar, this is my vessel, this is my chosen one. Well, it's hard for a lot of modern day believers to wrap their minds around that. But that's in God's providence, and he has a plan much further out than we can imagine. And he he had the vision. He saw the cross in the sky, and he heard the words, conquer by this sign. And so he started whooping up everybody's butt, defeating everything, every every army. And what did he do? He established a kingdom that ended persecution against the church. And for the first time in 400 years, Christians could worship God without fear of persecution. And I think part of the trap that we kind of get wrapped up in here in North American Christianity is that we have to give candidates what we call the Christianity litmus test, you know, uh, rather than is this God's will for this time. Precisely. Um, right. When, when so, people tell me, you know, over the years, a lot of people have written to me to tell me, you know, that Constantine was a, a real bad guy or evil guy, and uh, you know, they they got nothing good to say about Constantine, and 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 that just tells me two things. They know very little about world history, and they know very little about the ways of God. Because my reply to them is, let me tell you something. If you lived back in the days of Constantine, I assure you, if, you, if you'd been there and you were a Christian, you would have had a re-elect Constantine bumper sticker on your donkey <laughs> cart. Because he was the best thing that happened to the church at that time. Sure. More, more visions, more constant. They were they <laughs> so. they were still they were they were still burning Christians on light poles. Make Rome great again. He created the Eastern Roman Empire. That's right. And and so uh, Constantine put an end to the persecution of the church, and Christianity flourished because of Constantine. Absolutely, and like I said, it's hard for a lot of North American Christians to wrap their minds around God using the ungodly, uh, what we call, who, call who, the ungodly. Who the who church people call ungodly. That to accomplish his plan, his purpose, and his will, because sometimes there's not a godly person that that fits the bill. Well, I I don't know of anybody tough enough to take a beating like 
Donald Trump has taken a beating. I mean, they have pounded on that man. Right, and, 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 and his numbers continue to go up because of it. Yes, and it's it's like uh, I get I have this visual image of uh, Donald Trump like a big um, oak log, hmm. and it's got you know it's got handles on it, and the hand of God has grabbed those handles, and is just slamming that log into the gates of hell, just knocking this thing over, and. Uh, Donald Trump is tough enough to take the beating, and I'm talking about the beating that that God is is doing to him by using him as a as a battering ram against the the forces of evil in this country. You know, in the Old Testament, the story of Nebuchadnezzar and God using him is is a fascinating story. If you just look at Nebuchadnezzar alone, and just see the process that God worked in his life to to bring him to a relationship with God. Yes, I mean it was just. Amazing. In some ways, I see an analogy there with Mr. Trump in the sense we wouldn't consider him, you know, the cookie cutter type Christian candidate. But at the same time, we're seeing a transition in him where many of the values that believers hold dear, he's, you know, if you were to look at He's the champion of those. Right. Those issues. And it seems to be growing in those values. And that's, you know, that's what surprised me. I I just see so many parallels with the story of Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament. Mark, uh, this prophecy said, um, the Spirit of the Lord says in the next election, they will spend billions to keep this president in. Is that referring to Obama? Uh, Yeah. Uh, I I believe that there is a plan uh, for him to try and stay for a third term. Now, everybody says, well, he can't because of the Constitution. Well, first off, he's broken the Constitution how many times and have never stopped him. But I believe that there is a plan, but I believe at this point, now you got to remember, this is back in 2011, because I've written other prophetic words since then, and I, because the church has been crying out. That is the one thing they have been doing to, for God to heal the land, and God has said that I am going to heal the land on these other prophetic words that I've written. So back then, uh, at the time, he had a plan to run for a third term. I still think he does, and part of that, which is, doesn't take a prophetic voice to figure it out, is that he wants to declare martial law, in which case everything's off. And that's why you're seeing Soros bring in these agitators and, and literally try to start a civil war. Well, it's going to backfire, so I'm not too worried about it. And the other one is, is I believe Hillary Clinton, is the reason she hasn't been indicted is because they're going to see that no one can beat Trump. He's going, to be, he's going to have such a landslide. Nobody can beat Trump. They're going to panic. They're going to indict her at the last minute, one of the plans is, and then they're going to rally around Obama to try to bring him in for that third term. That could be possible, a, a, a second one. But there's other plans that I think that are going down, and that's why – well, and the other thing, too, is, is that when you see Hillary Clinton, that's just four more years of Obama. And we really don't know how much money they are spending. Look how much money they're spending just to keep Trump out let alone try to put Hillary Clinton in. You know what I mean? So, I mean, all this money, if you're bound by the super PACs, lobbyists, and the um, special interest groups, you are bound to the world system, period. And Trump is the only one that's not bound to that. So that is another uh, sign that basically God has chosen him. And so, I mean, uh, I think that there was a plan for this president to run for a third term I think right now at this point, I think that plan is going to get thwarted because of what God has been showing me and what I've written in these previous prophetic words. Because you remember this was, what, four years ago? So, yes. I mean, things five, change. five years ago. Five years ago. So, this I mean, month. Yeah, things change. So, I mean, you know, and they have changed since then as far as the prophetic writings that, I've, that you have that I've sent you. In, in my lifetime, I have never seen so many powerful people and entities unite from different political spectrums right to oppose one man and to openly say we will stop him right they don't even hide their intention they talk right. about how they're going to stop him even to the point where the Washington Post published an article talking about how to stop Trump after he wins the November election right and and again you're dealing with the kingdom of darkness and that's another sign, which I didn't write down. But the ones, I want to go over a couple of these signs real quick, because every time he's attacked, his poll numbers go up, the others go down. The, the second one was Megyn Kelly. Now, I hate to bring that up, but that was a sign. 
And she tried to go after Trump on the first debate, which created a huge uproar. And she herself said that she was uh, picking the questions herself, investigating the questions. Well, they weren't presidential questions. They were gotcha questions. And I heard from her own mouth in an interview that that morning of the, of the debate, she got violently ill. And what you didn't see on TV during the debate is that she had a blanket over her legs and a bucket next to her, her seat in case she got sick. Well, again, God was firing a warning shot. Don't attack my anointed, period. So, and now she's talking about not even upping her contract with Fox because Fox is in such disarray over this whole thing with Trump. It's affected her career. So you're seeing this, and you're seeing other news outlets taking a hit because they have been attacking God's anointed. So that's another sign. The other one is the kingdom of darkness is attacking this man like never before, like you just seen. This man, God is using this man to literally, he's not rattling the gates, because when you rattle the gates, you don't make entry. This man has, is literally splitting, the, splitting uh, the kingdom of darkness wide open, and God is using him as a light to do that with, because in every area that you can think of, immigration, I mean, the financial systems, the po political systems, the news media, all of it's corrupt, all of it's being run and dominated by the kingdom of darkness, God is using this man to expose it. Now you go to this, another sign is the last one, is that when you go to this man's rallies, you don't see these agitators at these other rallies. You might get one or two or here for somebody, this, that, and the other. But what you're seeing happening is that the kingdom of darkness is, no, is actually noticing the authority that God has put on this man, and those are demons manifesting in this man's rallies, inside and outside. And they're talking about killing him. Right. These are demons that are manifesting. Demons recognize authority when they see it. That's why they call them agitated. They get agitated. So, I mean, they're literally manifesting in this man's I mean, look, uh, Glenn Beck talked about stabbing him. I mean, of course, he later denied it, but right. the audio is clearly uh, says what he, he intended. He said right. the stabbing wouldn't stop. Do, uh, Ted Cruz jokingly said, yes. if, I, if Donald Trump was uh, behind my vehicle, right. I, I don't know which pedal I would push. I mean, this kind of talk is, is unheard right. of in right. a presidential race where people are openly talking about killing a presidential candidate. What is provoking this visceral hatred of Donald Trump? Because God is using him to literally split hell wide open and stop the, this new world order. Because, you know, again, they want open borders. They want free flow of people and product coming across the borders, the whole NAFTA thing, the new currency, this, that, and the other. And what God is saying is, no, I have chosen America for my gospel to go forth. I am going to use America as the hub by which the end-time harvest is to be launched. You know, I just thought of something. The Bible says that God establishes the borders of nations. That's true. So Satan is trying to erase borders. Yes. Borders are ordained by God. Yes. That's true. Never thought about that, Doc. Yes. And what's happening is, is that the church, the church has had a good game as far as praying and interceding for the country. We've gotten that part right. What we have not gotten right is our ground game, our ground warfare. And what God is showing me is that this is all about the end-time harvest. Like it, because in the other prophetic word that I wrote, America has been chosen for the, the hub by which the end-time harvest will be launched. Like England was the hub to D-Day. So here we go with this D-Day invasion thing where you had manpower, equipment, money, uh, weapons. That's all coming to America now for the harvest to be released. America is going to be the hub for the end time harvest to be released. And he's using Donald Trump to do that. And the reason is, is because the church is behind on the ground game. So God is having to use Donald Trump to literally split hell wide open right now and expose everything until the army of God mobilizes and basically hits the beaches and begins to take ground for the kingdom of God and hold it and get a stronghold here in the last Christian nation on earth. Mark, that was, the, that was the very next thing I was going to say to you. It, it seems as though God is using Mr. Trump to do what the church has failed and neglected to do. Yes. Which is to attack this evil regime. Yes. It, see, the, the, the church has not been doing its job because there are some things in the natural that are required. Now, I always love the quote when people tell me, well, how can you be Christian, you know, uh, and vote for Donald Trump and— 
You know, he's so brash. He calls names, this, that, and the other. Well, have you read your Bible lately? Jesus was, was the model that we all uh, are to live our lives by. He called people hypocrites. He called them, uh, you know, brood of vipers. I mean, he, he uh, called his own disciples cowards. Well, you, you know what, you know what uh, some church people would have said to Jesus? Uh, Jesus, you're not being Christ-like. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> what would Jesus do? Well, he, you know, uh, picking up a whip and driving people out of the temple exactly. isn't beyond the realm of possibility. So that, that was what was my next comment was going to be. He went to the temple, he turned the tables over and drove them out with a whip. Well, what was he saying? I mean, to turn the tables over on the corrupt, you're going to have to drive them out. And he didn't use the word of God; he used a whip. Mark, th- mm. this this ministry, true news. We we have been on the radio since 1999, and all we've ever talked about is this evil regime, right? And the need for repentance in the land, and and for the body of Christ to rise up and and take back this country and make it a Christian nation again. That's all we've ever talked about. And our biggest frustration over all these years has been the apathy the indifference, yes. and the complacency in the churches. Absolutely. And you're, what's, that's why God is having to use Donald Trump to do this, to hold off those forces, to hold off the voice of Islam and bolster the voice of Christianity, because he's already said he's going to do that. The, the wall has to be built. We have to. Rick Joyner had a vision uh, two year, over two years ago where it was called the Border Wars. You guys can look it up. Maybe you guys have already seen it, where that if the borders were not sealed— we would have a war in this country like the likes we've never seen before, and some of it's already starting. So the wall has to be built. We have to have borders, and these people have to be removed out of here, period, because we have to be able to get a foothold in the Christian world. They're trying to induce Islam in here and quiet silence the Christian voice. Mark, are you absolutely certain Donald J. Trump will be elected in November? I have to go by what God has has told me and shown me. And are you certain the Lord spoke to you that Donald Trump is going to be elected? Absolutely, yes. And you believe that this is the beginning of a spiritual turnaround in in the condition of the United States of America? Absolutely. America's best days are ahead of her. I'm not saying we're not going to have some issues before them because we are. There's going to be some hot spots. But just because we have tornadoes or hurricanes, America's not under judgment. Again, where's the seeds that all the good that America has done? There are countries that have done far, a thousand times worse than America ever thought about being. And the last time I looked, they're still on the map. Yeah, but they didn't have the gospel. They didn't reject the gospel. Yeah. Well, I mean, but again— We, we, have, we have a significant portion of, of the population that has openly defied God and said, we don't want— you, we don't want your son, we don't want your holy book, we don't want your commandments. Right. That's a problem. Right. And But the thing is, is that, again, here we go back to the church. The reason the country's in this condition is because of the church. And we've lost our ground game. And it's time now to hit the ground. It's time to actually get out from behind the four walls of your comfort zone and hit the streets to evangelize for this end-time harvest. Now, you've got churches out there that have, what, 10, 20, 30,000 people in them? Can you imagine for one second that if you took 30,000 people, that's literally an invasion force, and hit the streets of a major city and went in there and evangelized, loving on people, praying, healing the sick, casting out demons, and locked that city down for the kingdom of God, you could turn a city around overnight. But the problem is is getting people out from behind their comfort zone, number one, and number two, getting from out behind the four walls of the church. There's lessons to be learned in this election. Donald Trump has started an an incredible movement. God's used him to to start this movement. He's not doing it sitting behind his desk and behind four walls. He's going out and getting them, which is what we, as the body of Christ or the army of God, because they're two different things, the army of God has to do. Mark, in in another uh, prophetic word that you said the Holy Spirit gave you, uh, the Lord told you that Donald Trump will um, completely remake the United States Supreme Court. Yes. Um, the, the word, um, which one here? Yeah, it was Do Not Fear America. I, I wrote that on February 24th, 2016. Uh, in that prophetic word, and I, and I don't have proof of this, I didn't write it down at the time when God was dealing with me on this, because in one prophetic word, God said there was going to be three judges that the next president was going to appoint. 
Well, God started dealing with me on this, and I left it in there because I wanted people to see that, I, that I'm real. I'm not trying to deceive anybody. But he started dealing with me on this, and now the number is up to five. And I said, okay, Lord, the number's five. Uh, what's going to happen? And he says, one's going to die, and it's not going to be who they, who they expect. And I didn't write that down, so I have no proof of it. I only told my family about it. But one's going to die, and it's not going to be who they expect, because everybody expected it to be Ginsburg. She's the oldest. One's going to retire, and three were going to get caught up in some type of a scandal. So, but it would be reserved for God's anointed, which would be Donald Trump. That God was going to hold off this thing that, that Obama was trying to do and nominate someone, and that the next president would be the one to nominate. Okay, that's five seats. Right. Right. And that, he, that would re- reform the court, basically. You're telling us you believe the Lord has told you that President Donald Trump is going to appoint five justices to the Supreme Court. That's what God has told me. Now, what I didn't realize was, because i got, I got to be honest, I didn't think that this one that was going to die was going to be Scalia. I thought it was going to be a liberal judge, not a conservative one. So, I mean, that one even caught me off guard. You know, God doesn't tell the prophetic voice everything, all the details sometimes, you know. Well, personally, I think he was murdered. Yeah. And I believe this evil regime is trying to uh, speed up it's evil transformation. Absolutely, because the Supreme Court justice in some cases can be more important than the president. About a month or so ago, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich made a surprising comment on a live interview on Fox News. It went over the head of the of the Fox anchorman. Uh, he was asked, uh, you know, what explains the, the hatred of the establishment for Donald Trump? And... Mr. Gingrich uh, gave his uh, his uh, analysis, but the last thing he said was, and, and Mr. Trump did not go through the initiation. He did not join the secret society. Mm. Has the Lord spoken to you anything about about uh, you know secret societies in the in the country controlling the political process? No, he has not showed me anything about that. Uh, what he has shown me is just the corruption. Um, uh, and the one prophetic word that I wrote that you have, time is up for those who are corrupt. And the one thing that God is doing right now that he's very serious about, it doesn't matter if you're in the political arena, it doesn't matter if you're part of God's leadership in the church. If you are corrupt, God is going to expose you himself, and he is going to remove you. Because we should be on meat and not milk at this point. Because the end-time battle has begun, and the end-time harvest has begun. And again, we should be on meat, not milk. But if you are corrupt... He will remove you. And even to the point, and there's going to be some people probably disagree with me on this, when God told me this, he said, even if it means if they stand on the way of my agenda in America, I'll remove them from the face of the earth. Now, after he told me that, within 48 hours, two people died to confirm what I heard. One was a young man from the Obama administration who got killed in a, a weird bicycle accident on a bicycle race. He went head on with a car. And another one was a young Saudi prince. And... Well, people would ask, well, what does that have to do with America? Well, first off, follow the money for the elections. They have a vested interest in our elections. So that was two signs to me that what I was hearing was correct. But I, you're also, within the next, I'm going to say by the end of the month, this whole thing with the D.C. Madam thing is coming out. Mm-hmm. You've got a guy who's fixing to give 815 names between that and that island that the billionaire had, which still has not come to fruition yet, they haven't released names down there quite yet either. That's not come to pass. I think you're fixing to see one of the biggest political scandals in American history take place, and I think it's going to change the dynamics of this political race, number one, and it will be in favor, I think, of who God has anointed. And there's also going to be some things happen in the country as well. Um, I'm really surprised that we have not been hit yet. I think it's only by the grace and mercy of God that we haven't been on a terrorist hit. Uh, The Lord has showed me a date. Um, I'm working with some people right now that there's a possible hit coming, so people just be praying that God exposes it and thwarts it. But, uh, you know, I think between all these dynamics, I think that um, you're going to see a huge change in this process because, again, you know, uh, people like Marco Rubio, uh, they went after Trump. I mean, he, he, I mean, he lied, he betrayed, uh, he stole. I mean, 
And the one thing I tell people about a betrayer, you never have to worry about like Judas Iscariot. Sooner or later, they're going to hang themselves, and that's what happened to him. Uh, Ted Cruz, you're seeing a lot come out of with Ted Cruz right now. You know, I'm a, it's not my job to tell people who to vote for. You know, God gives everyone their own free will. All I'm telling you is who God has anointed for this hour, you have to discern. And that's what the church is lacking is discernment, because the church is split on this election right now. Use discernment and wisdom. Read the signs. God is giving signs all the time in this process, but people are not reading them. Look at the signs of what's going on with Ted Cruz and his campaign right now. These character issues that have been going on, stealing the votes from Ben Carson, uh, all these things. All these things are not lining up. Just because this man is a preacher's son does not mean he's best qualified for the job. You know, read the signs. Uh, Mark, uh, take a moment and, and uh, read these the uh, remake of Dwight Eisenhower's D-Day speech. You changed it uh, to be an address to the body of Christ. Well, I, I addressed it to the army of God, because what God is doing right now and some of these other words, you'll see that he is commanding his army to get in the fight, to rise up. He's trying to mobilize his army, the ground game that we've been talking about. So basically what, it, what this says uh, is it's from Supreme Headquarters, Department of Spiritual Warfare is what I labeled it as, from the Supreme Commander to the army of God, heaven's invading expeditionary forces. It says, apostles, prophets, evangelists, preachers, and teachers, men and women of the army of God, you are about to embark upon a great crusade toward which we have striven since all of creation. The eyes of the world and all of heaven are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brothers and sisters in arms and other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the satanic war machine, the elimination of the demonic tyranny over the oppressed peoples of the earth, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But now is the time. Much has happened since the demonic triumphs of years past. The body of Christ have inflicted upon the demonic great defeats in the spiritual and natural realms. Our spiritual offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and and their capacity to wage war on the ground. I have given you an overwhelming superiority in weapons for your warfare and place at your disposal great reserves of trained fighting men and women from the body of Christ. The tide has turned. The free men and women of my army are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory, for this is a great and noble undertaking, and the victory is yours, your supreme commander, God. Mark, which you don't know this, but going back to early 2012, I told our radio audience that I, I was— discerning in the spirit realm that Satan had launched a massive military-style assault against the church. Mm-hmm. I could feel it. You could feel a shift in, in the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I saw it with uh, um, the, the, the occult rituals on live television. Right. You know, at, at the, you know, the halftime of the Super Bowl and Grammy the, Awards. The Grammy and- Awards and uh, the Olympic Games and so forth, and you had, uh, you know, just very uh, dark demonic uh, ceremonies being held on on live television. But Mark, I said a number of times, I believe God's going to launch a D-Day invasion. He's going. There's going to be a counter offensive. <laughs> right. Wow. That's why this excites me. Wow. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's what this is. This is a call to arms right now. God is saying. It's time to, and we go back to the D-Day thing, because again, I believe it's going to come in three waves this harvest, and that's what God was showing me, and that you've got the body of Christ and the army of God, and they're two different things. Think of the body of Christ basically as like boot camp. The first wave of this, of this um, harvest, if you will, will be of the maturest of the mature, because what you have, if you study D-Day a little bit, you, you go back and you see that we're, uh, the, they were on the ships for three days, and these guys were seasick, and... What's happening is you have a, a lot of people from the body of Christ who are on these ships. They're seasick. They're being tossed about. They don't know which direction to go in, and they're focusing on the storm. So it's kind of taking them out of the role, out of the war, so to speak. Then you've got some who have matured enough to get into the landing craft. They're approaching the beach, but they're seeing the obstacles on the beach, and they're focusing on the obstacle versus the mission. What is the mission? The mission is to hit the beaches gain ground, move inland, and, and conquer that ground for the kingdom of God and hold it at all costs. And, again, God's using Donald Trump 
to split hell wide open, which is supposed to be our, our, our job, but we've got to get our ground game going, and he's buying time for us to get that ground game going. You know, Mark, I, I, I'll tell you, uh, personally, what, what, this, uh, what this has done for me is it's, it's caused me to um, uh, recognize that not every Christian is in the army of God. No. I just always assumed, you know, the body of Christ is synonymous with the army of God. No. But what I'm realizing right now is, okay, if you have a nation, mm-hmm. you have the general population. Right. The the entire general population is not serving in the military. There is a called out segment of the population that's been assigned the responsibility of waging warfare in defense of that nation. Yes. That's the army. Right. right. And so the church, the body of Christ, is the general population of the kingdom. But in the body of Christ, there is a segment of the body of Christ that's been called by the commander of heaven's armies. Correct. To to be on the battlefield. To be on the front line. Be on the front line and to wage spiritual warfare. Now, for those of us who are in spiritual uniform— and constantly engaged, we don't, you know, it's, it's, you, you kind of look back at everybody else and say, what, what are you doing back there? You know, yeah, why aren't you in the army too? Yeah. Why aren't fight. you in the army? Get out here and fight. Right. And it's because we're all at different spiritual maturity levels right now. And I think a lot to do with this electoral process, God is exposing things in the church. I think he's also discerning, and this is like a promotional time. Are you going to get promoted out of the body of Christ and into the army of God? At but, this you, time? but you know what? Something else I just thought about in World War II. Not everybody was in World War. I mean, not everybody was on the front lines fighting in World War II. But back home, Doc, you know what they were doing? They were sacrificing. They were going without. Mm-hmm. They were rationing. They, and they, they were rationing. They were buying war bonds. Picking they, up scrap metal. They and, were doing anything yeah. that they could do to contribute towards the victory. Right. Correct. So they didn't get a pass. They didn't get to sit, sit out World War II. Right. Everybody was doing something to help the troops win the war. Right. And I think what God is doing in this hour is that he's trying to call out the lukewarm Christian, if you will, or what I call the drive through Christian, where they just want to drive through and get their Happy Meal message. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's not going to cut it in this end time right now, because you're not going to survive these end times unless you are walking uh, in a constant presence of God and in the army of God, so to speak. God's trying to mobilize his army. He's trying to get people promoted. He's trying to get you matured, get you out of the body of Christ and in the army, and take your place in that army wherever it may be. I mean, you may be called to be uh, and this is going into the uh, into a different area. That he, you may be called to be a senator, congressperson, or a woman. It's our job as the army of God. If you're called to that, you need to take your place because now's the time. And uh, you know, in in this uh, prophetic message that, that you uh, you wrote in 2015, uh, I you know you, you're talking about uh, the, the spiritual principle of of uh, holding territory, occupying, and holding the territory, and you you. You quoted General Patton uh, yeah. when he when he said, "I don't like paying for the same real estate twice." <laughs> right, exactly. And, and I mean, and, and you're, and that's the other thing that I wanted to lead up to is is the leadership, because you know God's not going to put up with this corrupt leadership anymore. You're going to see, and that's the one thing that, that that Christians don't understand about Donald Trump. When you understand who and what Donald Trump is, you understand the man. He is a General Patton. He's a General MacArthur. And when General Montgomery, all these generals had something in common. And what was the one thing that always got them in trouble? It was their mouth. <laughs> because yes. they weren't politicians. These guys were created for one reason and one reason only, and that War. was to win. Yeah. Mark, uh, this is Doc. Um, yeah. uh, I, you know, this is a pretty dramatic prophecy, These, all of these together. Um, have you received any kind of backlash from these prophecies from— Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, can you share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I, the other day when Obama was trying was fixing to nominate Garland to the Supreme Court, the Lord told me, He says, "I want you to prophesy this thing uh, out in the open, this this uh, Do Not Fear America prophecy about the Supreme Court." Within an hour, 
I literally got attacked so hard. I unlocked my front door because I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. Five minutes into that, my wife calls me and says, hey, my car's broke down. She was on the way to lunch from work. I mean, it just, uh, we got hammered. Now, the attack didn't last long, but I mean, but I've been sick for 10 years. I, I've been literally sick for 10 years. That's why I was going to Dr. Colbert. But uh, I have not been able to leave my house. Literally, God's had me isolated in my house almost for 10 years. What are you wrestling with? What, what's the sickness? Well, for four or five years, they, they couldn't find anything wrong with me. I was bedridden for four or five days. I couldn't eat for four or five days. And then finally, I went to a doctor that found everything in one shot. I had a very low thyroid. I had severe adrenal burnout from the fire service, running day and night. And then I had the hormones of a 70-year-old at 43. But he left to go to a, a lucrative, um, he got a lucrative offer from Florida Hospital, and I had to go find Dr. Colbert at that point, and he took off where, where he left off. But I'm still not 100%. I'm still dealing with a few issues, but, you know, praise God, I'm able to do this right now. I'm able to come and, and do. But the point being is God's had me isolated for 10 years, and God is releasing upon the earth prophetic voices like myself. I'm not the only one. I don't take the glory for this. I give it all to God. But he is releasing prophetic voices all over the earth. Probably tens of thousands are hitting the earth, and all of heaven's coming with us in this end time. And he's releasing us out of these caves that we've been hidden. He's had us hidden for a reason. What's been the reaction from uh, the Christian community to the words the Lord's put in your heart? Well, actually, this is my first interview, <laughs> public interview with all of this. Um, I've, this is the first time I've done this. Um, I, you know, God bless her. Mary Colbert has sent this prophetic word out to a, a, a bunch of people. And uh, I just love the Culver's to death. They're great people. And she says people are carrying the Trump prophecy on their phone, and I'm just getting feedback from her because I don't have a platform. Uh, this is the first platform I've had, literally, right now, as we're speaking. So other than that— That's the, interesting. Yeah. yeah. The Lord is using True News uh, to release this prophetic word to the five world. 5 years old prophetic word. It sat there for five years. The yep. Donald Trump was chosen by God to be the president of the United States, and— People are hearing it for the very first time today on True News. Yes, absolutely. And But the, the feedback I'm getting back from Mary is that everyone's excited about it, that she's sharing it with. She's giving it to, I think, some big ministries because, you know, they deal with some big ministries. And uh, the feedback has been positive. Uh, I mean, not everybody's going to agree. I understand that, you know, and I'm ready for that. That's fine. Uh, that's that's their own free will to, to pick and choose what they want to believe. But, but you have to share what God's laid on your heart. Exactly. And so. You know, and I, I just want people to pray about and seek God's face as to who he's anointed and pray for discernment and wisdom in these end times, because the electoral process, you know, things are about to change, I think, again, in the next month or so. But just discern. That's what we need the most, discernment and wisdom in these end times right now, to discern who are the sheep's in well, uh, dressed in, or who are the wolves dressed in sheep's clothing, so to speak. Well, that's, a, that's another thing that's happened in this campaign. Yeah. Donald Trump's candidacy has ripped the cover off of a lot of people, and they have exposed <laughs> themselves for who and what they are. Yes, exactly. And, you know, Marco Rubio was one. And, uh, you know, and I think it's, it's beginning to happen with Ted Cruz. Even among— we're seeing in you know among the political elite. We're seeing among the news media. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing that they have been colluding and working together for yeah. years. Yes. And the Trump candidacy has forced them to come out in the open and declare that they are brethren. Right. Whether they're Republican or Democrat, they are they are brethren. They yeah. believe in this new world order. Right. And I kept I asked the Lord one day, I said, Lord, I said, why are we have control of the House and the Senate? What is going on? Why are they giving this president carte blanche? And the Lord told me, he says, it's because they're in on it. He yes, says, absolutely. they are giving him carte blanche because they're looking at Obama as the finisher. But he says, I have a plan. He says, it's not going to happen because, number one, I'm standing in the way and I've got a man called Donald Trump standing in the way until my army mobilizes. Do, do you remember several years ago, the, the House stenographer who who uh, began prophesying on the floor of the house? Yeah, I interviewed her here on the on this program, and her husband, uh, she, um, she was of course they took her out of the house, but she was uh, uh, she was prophesying. She said nothing like that had ever happened to her in her lifetime, but she said the spirit of God came on her. She began prophesying, and she was talking. I you know I don't remember the exact prophecy, but she was talking about that the Lord knew of their schemes and he was going to stop them and he and 
it referred to Freemasons. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I don't doubt that one bit. Well, you know, Mark, I got to tell you what, what this has done for me. I, I, I mean, I've had a long, lonely road here at, at this ministry. Uh, you know, the Lord called me out of TBN in 1998 and told me to, to warn America to repent. Right. And to come back to him. Or this country would face, uh, would, it, would, would suffer great woe and heartbreak and trouble. And so that's that's been our message. And over the years, things have gotten darker and darker. And the church has been silent. And evil has grown stronger in the land. And the church has been silent. And it's been it's been very depressing, you know, right. to to continue in this work, wondering uh, where does this end? Right. I mean, you know, I I know that there are saints who are hearing the message and responding. We hear from them every day, right? Uh, and, and so when when Mary Colbert gave this prophecy to me that you gave in two thousand eleven, beyond beyond the the revelation that Donald Trump would be the president of the United States, what I saw in it was the Lord saying to the body of Christ, I'm not done with America yet. No. I, I'm i hearing the prayers. I'm hearing the pleas of the saints who are grieving over the nation, and I'm going to give you a reprieve. I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak for me again. Yes. That was just an amazing um, fresh breeze in my soul. Yeah, and, and it's in the uh, prophetic word that you have called America, America. That exact phrase you just said. It's funny you say that because he's commanding his army in that prophecy to, uh, to arise and take your place. And uh, so, I mean, all the stuff that we're talking about is in that one prophecy, pretty much. Yeah, that, that prophecy says, uh, and this was given to you October 7, 2015, America, I have right. chosen you as the launching platform for the worldwide assault on the spiritually oppressed peoples of the earth. Yes. Uh, people will say, how are we chosen? It's as if America is frozen. Am I not the God of the universe and of all creation? I have heard the cries of my people that have sought my face, and I will heal their nation. People will ask how I will do this. I shall do this in two parts. Now, how? what are the two parts? Well, it says, first, the Spirit of God says, the army of God, out of the darkness I command you to arise and take your place, for I have given you extra time, mercy, and grace. Go, 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 do not slow down. Begin uh, to take and hold your ground, for there is no more time to waste. America will once again be the great light. The enemy will say, oh, the light, the light shines so bright, there is nothing else left to do but take flight. And indeed they will. The sign will be a mass exodus in the natural as the spiritual flee. Now, what, does that mean? what does that mean? Uh, I think it means people, are, as soon as he takes the oath, I think you're going to see a mass exodus south of the border. Oh, hallelujah. That'll be the sign. Okay, I hope it's the lefties, the communists, the socialists. I hope they flee. Yeah, it, it's all of them. That's what he's saying right here. Oh, uh, listen, I'll raise money to help them flee. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a flea fund. We will pay the relocation expenses of socialists and communists. Yeah. Leave the universities, leave the news media. Well, now Cuba's back open. They've got a new yeah, Cuba, bed. yeah. We'll send them. It, it won't cost that much. Send them over to Cuba. We could just buy a boat here and run charter back and forth <laughs> from Florida to Cuba. Take all the all the American communists over to Cuba and drop them off in that wonderful Cuban communist utopia. <laughs> and Obama could maybe become the president of Cuba. There you go. And his 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 portrait could be engraved next to Che Guevara. <laughs> Now, the second part of it says, the Spirit of God says, the gatekeeper, the gatekeeper, the President of the United States is the spiritual gatekeeper. I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, and anointed him as president for such a time as this. Can you not see this? For even in his name, Donald, meaning world leader, spiritual connotation means faithful, Trump meaning to get the better of or outrank or defeat someone, or something often in a highly public way. 
This man I have chosen will be a faithful world leader, and together with my army will defeat all of America's enemies in the spiritual and in the natural. You will see it manifest before your eyes. I will use this man to shut gates, doors, and portals this past president has opened. He will open gates, doors, and portals this past president has shut. My army shall not be silenced. They will begin to see he is the one I have chosen. They will begin to rally around him and keep him covered in spiritual support. And as you gain ground, they will say America is not frozen. And then it goes on and talks about the seeds that we were talked about earlier. Gentlemen, Doc, Edward, what are your thoughts as you listen to, to Mark? On his initial prophecy, when he said that the dollar will be the strongest, well, we go back to what we talk about oil and the economics of oil. Right now, as the oil price is depressing, or if we look back to January when it was severely depressed, the dollar was at its highest it's ever been because of the petrodollar alliance. So it, even even though this may have occurred back in 2011, it's it's occurring again right now. And based on what the IMF and what central bankers are planning, there's a plan to make the dollar so expensive that countries would have no choice but to decouple. So I, I think that part of the prophecy, it's, it's so huge. Huge part of that uh, message that you, uh, you wrote down. Yes. Uh, and, you know, God, the thing about the America, America prophecy, God also gives other signs uh, of what's going to take place. He talked about OPEC in here, actually. Um, you know, um, uh, he talked about the seeds. Yeah, I, I talk about the, the OPEC. I saw that in one of the prophetic words. W what was that about? Yeah, it says, OPEC, OPEC, take a hike, for I'm tired of your evil energy spikes. When my president takes office, you will shake and quake. You will say America no longer needs us, and that is true, for she will be energy independent from my red, white, and blue. For a sign will be given when prices go low, for a gallon of gas will be $1 and below. And what astounds me on that one is that it was, what, uh, maybe a month or so ago that Donald Trump was calling for $1 a gallon gas. So that was a sign that, was, that would be given. Mark, of course, there, there's been a lot of talk in recent years that the dollar is finished as the uh, global reserve currency, and there are powerful f forces uh, at work to bring it down. And I believe, I believe uh, Barack Obama is part of it, working from the inside to... Uh, weaken the United States so that uh, other nations will rise up bigger and stronger. But I've pointed out in the past that the enemies, the, the real motive of the enemy in destroying the dollar is to cut off the flow of money to world missions. Sure. That's a uh, I don't know if the, if the Church of God, the Body of Christ, comprehends uh, the magnitude of, of of the spiritual impact that would be felt worldwide if right. if the U.S. dollar collapsed. Right, and that's why Donald Trump's harping all the time on Ch the Chinese devaluing the dollar because he's wanting to bring the money back to America. Because again, it takes money to move the gospel. It takes manpower. It takes equipment. It takes people. Or, I mean, you name it. Uh, food. I mean, all these things that it took. Like in England, they were they were they were storing this stuff up for the, for the D-Day invasion. It's going to be the same way here. There's going to be so much money pouring into this country, and he knows how they're trying to devalue the dollar. He knows the way around all this to stop it. And you know that's why you're seeing this kingdom of darkness trying to fight him on this mess. It's not going to work, uh, you know, because God's already spoken it. There it is. And when, when God speaks something to me, that's that's it. Well, this is a fascinating uh, <laughs> message, Doc. Uh, you know, it's being released for the first time. You know this is going to make news. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely. This program's going to make news itself. And, and we'll get the emails and we'll get the calls. And but, so but thank those, goodness Mark has a tough skin from being a fireman for all those right. years because— <laughs> He's a firefighter. Uh, yeah. So, but but this is going to get picked up uh, by the by the secular news media. Yes, that a, a prophecy was was given to someone five years ago that Donald Trump would be elected president of the United States, and, and so uh, Mark, you you might want to get prepared. Yeah, <laughs> I have been I've been prepared for a long time. Uh, you you may you may find yourself uh, being interviewed quite often in the days ahead. Uh, we're honored that uh, the yes. Lord arranged for True News to be the ministry and the, the media venue that this um, prophetic word was going to be 
brought forth. Of course, uh, only time will uh, decide, show us whether it is a, a prophecy from the Lord. And we won't have to wait that long. I mean, this is uh, this is uh, April, and November will be here very soon, and we will know whether this was a, a prophecy from the Lord, and it will it will uh, stand or fall on its own in just a few months. Absolutely. But, but the when you read it, it, Doc, it just it reads like Mark wrote it last week. Right. It really does. Not you know, five we, years ago. We were reading through it earlier today and it just shocked. This was five years ago. I don't know anybody that was seriously talking about Donald Trump running for president five years ago. Oh, it, well, you know, he toyed with it, you know, oh, through yeah, several election sure. cycles, but nothing right. serious. And to go into detail about the the attacks that yes. would be on him and that the, the, the attacks would run off his back like, like water off a duck's back, and right. uh, you know, billions will be spent. I mean, this is so accurate. That's what makes me believe this is a true word from the Lord. And if it is, what really excites me is that the Lord is saying to us, the body of Christ, "I'm going to give you a second wind. I'm going to give you. I'm going to. I'm going to get the enemy off your back because the enemy's been." on the church of god intently intensely here in in recent years the persecution uh, has ramped up the hostility you can feel the hostility in this country towards the church yes and and it would be refreshing to to have a period of time once again in this country where we did not have that hostile environment amen on the body of christ and on preaching the gospel and and to have a man in the White House who was actually favorable to the churches in this nation and would actually help us instead of fighting us and threatening us and plotting against us. Yes. I mean, it's, it's been a long time since we had that kind of, that kind of president. Amen. Yeah, so, it, it's coming. Amen. It's coming. <laughs> All right. Well, my guest has been Mark Taylor. He's a retired firefighter. You heard it for the very first time here on True News. On behalf of Doc Burkhart and Edward Zoll, I'm Rick Wiles. Thank you for listening to the program today. Spread this program around on social media. Do your part to be an evangelist and uh, tell everybody you know uh, to listen to this program. And uh, also, uh, please prayerfully consider supporting True News. We are supported 100% by the generous love offerings of the people who listen to this program on a daily basis. You can support us at True News, T-R-U-N-E-W-S, truenews.com.